Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Modern Cube Draft. This is a medium pack to start. Nothing super incredible. Uh, no blue fetch lands. The fetchable land is breeding pool, and I don't think blue-green is the best color combination in this format. You want to have good removal, and blue and green are the two worst removal colors. So they work as a like as a color. You can even have them be your base, but you need to splash another color for sure so that you can kill stuff. Um, but I think we're going to take Smuggler's Copter here. This card is really, really good. It's flexible. It goes into many decks. It's hard for a lot of decks to kill. Um, smooths your draw. Just a really powerful card. Pretty bad pack to follow it up, though. Um, my favorite thing to follow up this with is other cheap cards like um, uh, Porcelain Legionnaire or um, Fracture and Revoker. Just cheap like artifact cards that can go in multi multiple different aggressive decks. Here, there's no white cards in the pack, interestingly. I guess, I mean, there's white multicolor cards, but no mono-white cards. Um, if this was pack one, I would definitely take Misty Rainforest very happily. We could take Ignoble Hierarch, although it's awkward that it doesn't crew the Copter. Hostage Taker is decent. We also could just take Incinerate. I think Copter is great in Mono Red, and Mono Red's a very good deck when it's open. Um, I don't love just slamming, like, pack one, pick one, Eidolon of the Great Rebel, but Incinerate's a card that I like taking here because... Smuggler's Copter into Incinerate is a phenomenal start for a Mono Red deck, but it's also good in a lot of other archetypes. And Mono Red is not a deck that can support multiple drafters very easily. So I think I'm going to take the Incinerate here, and then we'll see how open Red appears to be. Um, okay, there's a Thought Seize. Definitely the best card in the pack. And I think Black Red is a really powerful color combination. You get all the best removal. You get Discard. You get um, like a, a lot of good aggressive creatures. And then the Sacrifice synergies are pretty strong. Um, could also take Fanatical Firebrand, which is way worse than Thoughtseize, but it's, like, good if we are specifically mono-red. Uh, Shadow Spear is fine. Prismari Command is not that good. Hmm. Yeah, I think it really is between the Thoughtseize and the Firebrand. I think I'm going to take the Thoughtseize. If red is open enough to be worth drafting, Fanatical Firebrand wheels 100% of the time. This is really not that high of a pick by most players. Um... And so if it comes around, then we can, like, potentially pivot to Mono Red, and we'll just take the Thought Season and be set up with some good interaction if Red is not super open. Okay, interesting pack here. Um, Flay Essence is good black removal. There's Beaumont Courier, which is a reasonably good one drop. It's not the best, but it's quite good in some situations. And then there's Expressive Iteration, which is just, like, a broken, broken card. And a fourth big express if, oh, expressive iteration is a bit of a sign. Um, that obviously puts us into three colors, which is a little bit tough this early with no fixing. But I think it is still the pick, actually. This card is really on that power level. If Beaumont Courier was like a Ragavan, obviously I would take it. Maybe even if it was a Goblin Guide, I would take that as a sign. But this is like not that high of a pickup by people, so the fact that it's still here fourth pick doesn't mean too much. Whereas the fact that this is here fourth pick definitely says something. So we'll take the iteration. Okay, some interesting options here. There's a Sulphur Falls, Doom Blade, um, Grim Lava Matcher, but I think I like taking the Chandra. Chandra's a really strong card. Yeah, let's go with that. So we might end up just abandoning this Thought Seize. Thought Seize is a good card, but it's not like a must play by any means. Um, red does appear to be pretty open. I think I'm taking Royal Eruption here couple things to note. First of all, we already have, like, we don't have many creatures right now. We actually have none, so Copter's not looking great. I'm not too worried about that. I think we're very likely to have a high creature count, but we do need to be somewhat aware of that. I still think, though, Bloodthirsty Adversary is just not that exciting of a creature, and Royal Eruption, I guess, also not that exciting of a burn spell, but it's more, like, it's much more common to be short on burn and have too many creatures than the other way around. So I think I'll pretty happily take the Royal Eruption here. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Um, there's Bloodsook Champion, which is really good if we are playing black, but I'm not... And there's and then there's Lava Claw Reaches to help with the splash. But I kind of like just continuing to stay red. Red is looking pretty open. I like both Thoughtseize and Expressive Iteration, but I'm willing to drop both of them if Mono Red is completely open. Um, so then that brings us to Karizev versus Mizium Mortars. And I think here I will take the Karizev. Um, I just took a, I've taken a couple burn spells. Um, Karizev is a, a solid creature. I think it's better than Bloodsoak Champion usually. Very, very hard to block this effectively. 
Um, and Mizzy Mortars is worse than these burn spells because it doesn't go to the face. Okay, there's a Roast, so another one of these removal spells that doesn't go face. Compulsive Research is pretty good. So that would be kind of interesting. We could be like Blue-Red Counter Burn or like just Splash Blue for card draw. I don't think Terror of the Peaks is that good. Scribe Peep Scrounger is interesting, though. It beats down pretty hard. Um... If we play Compulsive Research, that makes our Chandra worse. But I guess same with Scrap Heap Scrounger. You know, I think I actually am going to take the Compulsive Research here. Blue-Red looks to be fairly open, and um, I think that seems solid. Now we'll take Swift Spear. Goblin Bombardment is a good card, but it's better in Black-Red than it is in Blue-Red. And I think we're looking more and more likely to be just Blue-Red. This card is like, I don't get why this is in the format. No deck really wants this card. I, I wish it was good. It's a sweet card. But it's not very good. Let's take the Swiss Spear. Okay, now we'll take the Eidolon. That's pretty nice that that wield. Fanatical Firebrand came around. No surprise there. Although, this could be Bedlam Re Reveler deck, potentially. If we're actually playing blue, Bedlam Reveler is quite nice. Yeah, actually, I think we're going to take this card. Beaumont Courier wield. That's nice. Grim Lava Mancer. Sweet. Uh, I guess Ulmog. All right, so it's, still, it's possible we do still just go straight up Mono Red. Um, but I think these blue cards are both really good and they synergize well with a lot of the rest of our stuff. Like Monastery Swift Spear wants you to be playing a lot of like, like blue card draw works really well with Swift Spear. Um, so does Grim Lava Mancer. This reward you for filling up your graveyard. So does Bedlam Reveler. So a lot of our cards play well, like become even better if we have blue cards. A few also get worse notably, including Beaumont Courier. Expressive Iteration keeps your hand full. Beaumont Courier wants you to empty your hand, so that's a bit of an anti-synergy. And Chandra also, of course, wants you to have as many red cards as possible. But at the same time, Chandra does make mana, which lets you take advantage of card draw better. So, hard to say. If we end up not playing blue, I will kind of wish that we had the um, that one drop, but it's fine. Okay, what do we have here? No fixing. That is important. We I'm not going to be able to play this deck if we don't have fixing. Uh, but, yeah, I think we just take Phoenix of Ash here. Pretty solid card. Uh, it comes down. The, the base rate's fine, and then the, the resiliency is great. Um, resilience? Resiliency? Not 100% sure on that one. Um, but it's another card that becomes even better for playing blue, especially, like, compulsive research type cards. So that's a pretty great pick pickup. Uh, Rift and Cloud Skate is fine. Time Warp is also fine. These are both... Actually... I think they're better in blue-red than in other color combinations, but I still think we're just going to take the Phoenix here. There's a chance it would wheel, but there's no other red cards in this pack. And this is also a card that you don't need to be all in red to want this card. Anything with escape is good in any deck that's casting a lot of spells, so take this. Okay, interesting pack. I think we just got to take the Goblin Guide. Um, a Braid is decent. Like, there's these if we're going bigger, but... Goblin Guide is just so good. It might come around, but I don't think we can risk it. It's so much better than a Braid for this deck, especially when we already have a lot of twos. So we'll see. What are the conditions that would need to be met for blue to be good here? First of all, we need to get good fixing. At least three pieces of fixing that are blue and red. We passed at least one. Um, second... I would need more than just these two. Like, they're both good, especially Iteration, but I would also want, like, Delver of Secrets would, could be potentially interesting. Um, if we got uh, Ledger Shredder, that could be good. Uh, also, just, like, Thought Scour type cards. Um, so, yeah, something like that. We're not playing in Vintage Cube, of course, so we're not going to be getting any Ancestral Recalls, which is too bad. Um, okay, pretty easy Goblin Rabble Master here. There's no good blue stuff for us, and also no good red stuff for us, so that's easy. We could maybe play Aether Sphere Harvester out of the board. Also, for mono red, I actually like Field of Ruin quite a bit. This card has consistently impressed me. There's, it's very good against Bounce Lands and Man Lands, and pretty much every deck is playing some of those. So I like this a lot, but still, pretty easy Rabble Master. This card's great. All right, looking more and more like we're going to be mono red. Sorry, Fanatical Firebrand. Alright. 
Solid pack here. I think we take the DRC. This is much better for playing blue red. It, uh, it, like this plus expressive iteration is playable in modern and potentially even legacy. So this makes me want to play blue a little bit more. There's also rabbit battery, which is a good card. It's especially good with stuff like uh, goblin rabble master. I think it's more likely to wheel though, and also probably just not quite as good as the DRC. Um, we should note how easy it will be to get Delirium, though. Right now we have a lot of creatures. We also have a couple artifacts, a random enchantment, a planeswalker, and then one instant, one sorcery. Seems reasonable. Yeah, let's take this. Hmm, interesting pack here. So Fire Ice is good for blue-red, but I think at this point it's looking increasingly likely that we just play mono-red. Blue has not looked that open now. Like, we haven't gotten almost any in this pack, so I think we should not. We should assume we're not going to be playing blue. That doesn't mean that Fire Ice is unplayable. You can play this just as a 2 damage, divide up 2, or 2 mana for 2 damage, divided as you choose Burn Spell, which is playable. But I think we'll take the Hazorat here. Yeah, Hazorat seems solid. Okay, there is a Rogren Triome, so that is a blue-red land, but I think at this point we're just... I like it. We, this deck doesn't really want tap lands. I think we just don't take that and take instead. Bergy's not that good. It's between Sword of Fire Ice and Dismember. Also, Rector's Carnarium. I, it actually would let us bring back Smuggler's Copter. But I still think that's not the pick. I think I'm just going to take the sword here. We have 11 creatures now. We have a high creature count. May not be a card in the main deck. Actually, maybe we do just take the Dismember. Yeah, I'll take this card. It helps us to keep our curve really low. And having a lot of removal is good in many matchups. Now we'll take the Burst Lightning. Rampaging Frostedon is fine, but we have Beaumont Courier. We have Hazoret. We want to be emptying our hand quickly. Let's take the cheap cards. Black Cleave Cliffs is also a consideration for the... Uh... Oh, wait. We didn't even end up getting the um, Scrap Heap Scrounger. So no consideration for Black Breadland then. I guess, well, it does help with Dismember, but still. Okay, red's looking open. I think we're in the right lane. Um, it's close between these two. In general, I like taking the cheaper cards, and I think that will win out here again. Yeah, Collective Defiance is solid, but let's take the Earthshaker. Okay, this was our original pack. It was, it only had one red card before, so I'm not worried about the fact that nothing came around. Zyotor's Proving Ground is not where we want to be, so I'll take the Stone Coil Serpent. It's not bad. I don't think it's likely to be a main deckable card for us. Um, it, it is like a main deckable card in many mono red decks, but I just think we're going to have so many cards, we're not going to have space. But it's a good sideboard card at the very least against multicolor decks. If we play against like some sort of five color Niv Mizzet nonsense deck that's playing like Abrupt Decay and Lightning Helix, then Stone Coil looks really good. Um, here we'll take Goldspan Dragon. We're not a Mind Stone deck. Okay, Field of Ruin Wheel. That's good. This would be an okay sideboard card in the Aggressive Mirror, but I still think I'd rather have the Field. Now, there's a Sword, which would be another good sideboard card, but Rabbit Battery is a really nice pickup, so we'll go with that. It's a one-drop that doesn't become irrelevant in the late game. Always nice. Now we get Outpost Siege, good sideboard card. Bergy, maybe sideboard card. And Ferocidon, main deck card. That's great. So let's cut this. Probably cut the Reveler. What is going on here? Okay. Um, all right. Pack three. Now we get the blue-red lands, but I think that ship has sailed. I love expressive iteration, but I'm not going to warp my deck around it. Um, also not going to warp my deck around on that, although it's there. Uh, let's take the Porcelain Legionnaire. Really good pickup. Uh, probably the best two-mana aggressive creature ever printed, <laughs> or like at least in the running. Um, very hard to block well. Comes down cheap, hits hard, just a great card. P and Kieran Lar is okay, and if it wheels, I'll be pretty happy, and it, it almost definitely will wheel, but yeah, I'll take the Legionnaire. The best red decks have very, very few four drops, so I'm not worried about the fact that we only have one right now. <coughs> okay, now here we can take Abbot of Carol Keep. Not a super exciting pickup, but a good one. <coughs> This is a card that is solid on curve, just two mana, two power creature that has prowess. You can pump it up pretty quickly. Um, any creature that 
has greater power than its mana cost is going to be a solid pickup in a red deck, and this creature's power is like at least two and a half, often more. Um, so, yeah, good pickup. Thunder and Rebuke would be fine. I probably wouldn't want to main deck this, because again, we want all of our burn to go to the face, but solid card. We actually are kind of light on burn. We got a lot early on, but we haven't gotten that much since then, so we have Royal Eruption, Incinerate, and Burst Lightning. That's it. So, I am interested in more burn that goes to the face, but Thunder and Rebuke is not that, so give me the Abbot. Now we get a quite bad pack for us. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I guess I'll just take the Reckless Impulse. I'm not thrilled about this. Uh, it's a decent card. It's it's pretty good card draw, and it's better the lower your curve is, so it works well with our current current deck. It's the thing is it almost definitely would wheel, so I would prefer to get something else that's more universally desirable to pack, like, first, like, a Mutavolt. I would easily take a Mutavolt out of this pack and wield Reckless Impulse, but don't have that option. Sword of Hearth and Home is an okay sideboard card against green-white, and I actually think green and white are both pretty good colors against red in general, but I think it's still just, like, kind of medium. The trigger ability is pretty bad. Like, ramping doesn't help in these decks, and flickering stuff also doesn't really help. It's fine with like Pete and Karen Lar if we wheel that, but let's just take the impulse. <sighs> okay, pretty easy for X Revoker here. Imperial Recruiter is okay in some decks, but this is not the best deck for it. We're not trying to play a value game, and a three mana one one is not aggressive, and we are aggressive. Sacred Foundry would be okay, can help with Porcelain Legionnaire, but. Let's just take the Revoker. Really good pickup. I'm, I'm happy about that one. Ooh, okay. We're getting some top end here. Do we want to get Pyromancer or Chandra? Hmm. I think Chandra's a bit better. They're both solid. <clears throat> but especially given that we have so few four drops already, I think I'm fine taking one more. Yeah, close pick, but I'm going to take the Chandra. Okay, there's another Chandra, but this one's quite a bit worse. I think we take the Reckoner here. <clears throat> it's a little bit awkward with uh, Field of Ruin, but I still think that's the pickup. Chandra might come around, and in that case, it'll be a solid card out of the sideboard, but let's take the Reckoner. Hmm. Okay, we're not an Obosh deck. Glorybringer is expensive. I don't like five drops in general, but this is probably the best five drop we could get. This is, I mean, this card is unbelievably strong. I actually think this is like very slept on as one of the top 10 or 15 cards in the whole format. <clears throat> this game is so much about having your bombs line up well and kill their bombs. And Glorybringer very often comes down and instantly kills a planeswalker and a creature. And then it's still a dragon that hangs out. So it's a three for one. And then. Also a quick clock and just a really good card. So I've first picked this many times and been very happy with that. Wow, now Figure of Destiny and Soul Scar Mage. So that's pretty sweet. I think I like Figure of Destiny a bit more here, especially because we do have a pretty high creature count. Yeah, Prowess is not... We're not using Prowess super well, so we'll take the cheap creature. Now we get the Pia on the wheel. That's nice. <clears throat> Thunder and Rebuke on the wheel. Red is just so open. Um, I don't think I want to risk having a tapped land, even though it would help with Dismember. So I'll just take this for the sideboard. <laughs> Sorry about the sniffliness. But I'm a little sick, but hopefully that's not a problem. All right, Hate Draft, Coiling Oracle. This deck looks great. We're going to need to make a few cuts. Um, whoa, I was not expecting Pyromancer to wheel. Very happy about that. Let's cut the Pia to keep the curve down. Maybe we do actually cut the Glorybringer for game one at least and just go like full in aggro. Um, this is a 15 land deck, so we need to make two more cuts. I don't love having this many three drops, but they're all really good. Um, we could maybe cut Dismember from the main deck, but then we're pretty light on removal. Yeah, I think we do want the Dismember. Maybe we cut Reckless Impulse. We ended up with more three drops than I was expecting. Although Reckless Impulse is really good. It doesn't impact the board, but it's very good for digging towards burn. 
Um, I definitely want these burn spells. I think I want all these hard hitting two drops. Definitely want the copter. This is a great smuggler's copter deck. I might actually cut Dragon's Rage channel. Well, hmm. We don't have that many ways to trigger it because we have such a high creature count. But we do have a lot of different card types. Hmm. How many one-drop creatures do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, we actually have seven different one-drop creatures. That's pretty good. Okay, I think I'm going to move DRC to the board. I don't feel great about it because that card is broken, but I think this is a good deck for it. And then maybe we do just have to cut the worst three-drop. Like six three-mana cards is just so many. Okay, I think I'm going to cut Boros Reckoner. I think the other cards are a bit better. The problem with Reckoner is that it's pretty bad against control and pretty bad against white removal and black removal. It's really good against mono red decks. So in the mirror, I'll bring this in. But against a lot of other decks, it's kind of underwhelming. It's still a card that I'm very happy to main deck usually. But here, I just want to minimize. Like, you know, eight cards that cost more than two is kind of too many. Um... Especially if we're trying to play this uh, Reckless Impulse. So I think I like doing this. And then we have a great sideboard. If we ever have a dead card, this is just like a generically pretty good card that we can bring in. Glorybringer when we want, uh, Glorybringer and Pia when we want to go bigger. Reckoner against Red. Rebuke against Creatures. Outpost Siege against Control. Really solid sideboard plan. Also, um, oh, I thought we got Sword of Fire Nice. Guess we didn't. Not too bad. We could bring in this against Mono White. Uh, but yeah, this deck looks sweet. Let's add 14 basic mountains. They're going to struggle here, yeah. Phyrexian mana does not work the way you think it does, Magic Online. Alright, this deck looks really, really good. We'll submit like this, and I'll see you in round one. Alright, we have our opponent for round one. Poor old Wolf J90. They're on the draw against Mono Red. Never a position you want to be in. This head looks great. We'll keep it. We need to find one more land, but we have Reckless Impulse to dig. We have a really nice curve. It's not the most aggressive hand. Neither of our... No, actually, none of our cards have higher power than mana cost. But... That's fine. I think this deck is just going to absolutely stomp any control decks or derpy, multicolored mid-range decks. We'll struggle against... Certain green creatures, like Thrag Tusk and Elder Gargroth. We also could struggle against mono white decks that are just going a little bit bigger and have stuff like Skyclave Apparition to remove our threats. Um, we just want to play against blue-white control. <laughs> when it says, bro, of course they give me Benny Hills as an opponent. They play Shadow Spear, though, which is, like, the best card against us. We have an, a temporary answer, but I don't think it's super likely to work in the long run. As in, they're just going to, like, kill this and then equip their Shadow Spear, but hopefully we can just be out, like, out-tempo them. Depends on how many creatures they have. <laughs> they've known they've been cursed for years. All right, hopefully no creature here. Like, it might be a Porcelain Legionnaire, in which case, like, we're massively... Oh, Stoneforge Mystic, okay. Hopefully no Batter Skull. One of their targets is already in play. Oh, no. Well, I, I, this game is, like, honestly over. Oh, wow, okay, that was, that was incredibly clutch. Yes, that, I mean, that's amazing. Now we can play Chandra Plus and then add mana and, um, kill this. But if they could have just put the Batter Skull into play this turn, I, I don't think we could win. Like, I wouldn't, I guess I wouldn't snap concede, but we wouldn't really have a path to victory. But now we do, which is to win before they play Batter Skull. We can play Reckless Impulse and then use Grim Lava Mancer, so we can, if they play a creature that is has less than two toughness, or less than three toughness, we can kill that. 
If we draw land, I'll probably just discard the Reckless Impulse and play Spyro. Brutal Cathar. Okay, that's not too bad. If they take out the Revoker, we can kill it with Lava Mancer. They take out the Lava Mancer, but then we still have the Revoker, so they can't use Shadow Spear. And we, it shouldn't be too hard to find another way to kill the Cathar. Hmm. Okay, I actually think let's let's play the impulse. Yeah, let's play the impulse here and see what we hit. We, I, I think it seems pretty good to dig towards a removal spell. Mountain figure of destiny. Okay, so I'm gonna play the pyro for my hand this turn and play the figure of destiny next turn. Question is, do we want to offer the trade with the revoker? I think the answer is yes. It does give them their Shadow Sphere, but it gives us our Grim Lava Mancer, and I think that's a good trade. And then also, if they take two, that's great. Like, we are a burn deck. We Every point of damage can matter. The more I've played Mono Red decks, like this flavor of Mono Red decks specifically, the more I've realized, like, you just want to attack almost always. Oh, no. Wow. This looks like the, just the nightmare matchup. Shadow Sphere, Solitude, Batter Skull... Stoneforge, uh, we'll play land, pyro, <laughs> but now they can equip their shadow spear, and we can't do anything about that. There's a royal eruption, so that if they do equip, we can kill it next turn, and they can't kill our Chandra, but the problem is they're going to get the batter skull very soon, and we don't have a braid or other ways to kill artifacts. Oh no, four mana, what, what could this be? Sarah Paragon. Okay, Sarah Paragon is kind of annoying. Um, hmm. So we have a couple options here. One option is to, hmm. so yeah, one option is to play land from exile, play Royal Eruption on the Brutal Cathar, plus Chandra for mana, play Hazoret, swing. But the problem is they can just replay what their Cathar from their graveyard if we do that, and just take out the Hazoret that way. Man, this is just a nightmare matchup. Sarah Paragon's another, yet another card that's incredible against us. And then they can just equip the Sarah Paragon and hit us for four with lifelink. I think the game is over, to be honest. I mean, I guess, so one path to victory is just play Figure of Destiny and make it an 8-8. Eight, eight. Hmm. But the problem is they can just, like, play Batter Skull. Ugh, they just have so much life gain. I don't think we can afford to let the figure of destiny languish in exile. The question is, do we want to play land from exile or our hand? We could play land from our hand and then play Hazoret and attack, but I don't even really want to do that because if we do that, then Brutal Cathar goes, gets killed. We get our Grim Lava Mancer back, but then they can play Brutal Cathar again from their graveyard with this and exile our Hazoret. So it's crazy how fast you get to this. I, like, I thought for two minutes... Um, so I don't even think it's that good to attack with Hazorat this turn. So let's just play... I guess at that point we should just plus for a card. In case we hit, like, Dismember. Rabble Master. Okay. So we'll go Land. Figure of Destiny. Rabble Master. Uh, send just this. Doesn't matter. <laughs> And then we can level up the figure. And then our plan is just figure of destiny, basically. Maybe an 8-8 with flying can beat them. We, uh, at the very least, it does have first strike, so it can block and prevent their lifelink. The problem is, like, we don't even have top decks. We, we're not set up for a, a grindy game like this. Sarah Paragon is just a disaster for us. We can change our deck. Like, this is looking like a matchup where it's going to be very hard to go under them. So we're probably going to need to go a little bit bigger. Like, cut Goblin Guide, bring in Glorybringer, and be, try and, like, play a mid-range game. 
But game one, we don't have those top end pieces that we would need to win that sort of game. We basically needed to like go under them, but then they had the solitude, and I just don't think this is the sort of game where we can go under it. So not looking good. But at the very least, they don't have the they don't have a land for batter skull right now. It looks like they also didn't equip shadow spear. Now they put out in the brutal Cathar, but we can kill that. They can play Stoneforge Mystic from the graveyard. This thing also gains life. How is it that... So out of the one, two, three, four, five, six spells that we've seen, four of them gain life. Actually, five of them gain life. They don't play Stoneforge from the graveyard. That's weird, but... Let's level up figure. Untap. I mean, they, we're actually in a pretty good spot if they don't have something in their hand. We can push a lot of damage right now. Um, so, do we, I think I'm just going to plus this for mana. Not that I even need the mana, but we're not playing a card this turn. I think pretty much no matter what. Oh, this flips and becomes a 4-4. Four, four. Right. We could play and kick Royal Eruption. That's kind of interesting. Alternatively, we, what do we do? Just like play Copter Pass. We could also play and kick Royal Eruption on the Sarah Paragon. Okay, if we kill the Moonrage Brute, how much damage can we hit them for? Rabble Master is going to swing for three, and then the token is one, so four. Five, six off the figure, seven, eight off the Pyromancer, nine off the Chandra. That's probably our path to victory. I don't think it's likely to work, but it could. I really wish that this didn't have, that this had one last point of toughness. Yeah, I think that's our path to victory. So hit you for one. If they have mana tithe, I'll, I'll scoop, certainly. Don't care about this ward. They really gain life off Sarah Paragon, Solitude, Stoneforge Mystic, Shadow Spear, and Batter Skull. They're just built for this matchup. Alright, decent hit here. And now their mana is a bit constrained, because they have a lot of options that are good, like playing Batter Skull, equipping Shadow Spear, playing stuff back from their graveyard, but they're, they can't... Okay, now they could go Brutal Cathar from the graveyard and equip Shadow Spear to Sarah Paragon, which is a pretty scary line. They could also kill our Chandra if they want to. But we get to play Hazard next turn, potentially. They play... Oh, Moonrage Brute comes in on this side. That's way better for us. Because it doesn't exile anything from our battlefield. Now they can equip Shadow Spear to the Sarah Paragon and kill our Chandra. Get it going to nine. Oh, interesting. They kill our figure of destiny. So they're not equipping Shadow Spear. And now this flip. Wait, what? Why is it? Oh. They cast. Oh, okay. That's actually really smart. Um, Wait. Exile target creature until this leaves the battlefield. So we can kill this with Lava Mantra in response and it won't take out our uh, our thing. They cast their spell in their end step so that it would become night. But we get to this is fine. They get to gain two life, which is not ideal, but we still get to keep our Rabble Master around. Oh, okay. Well, that, I mean, that was really lucky. Um, but I'll take it. Dismember this and then that should be lethal with a Hazorat. Okay. 
All right. Clutch draws there. Um, yeah, if I were the opponent, I probably would have equipped Shadow Spear and killed the Chandra. Although, I guess you really want to block the Rabble, so hard to say. But we managed to overcome a bunch of life gain in game one. That's pretty sweet. I still think we do that pivot that I was talking about, so no more Goblin Guide. Um, all right, what, what, what cards do we want to bring in? Definitely Glorybringer, definitely Pia and Kieran Lar. I think Outpost Seed, probably, and also maybe Dragon's Rage Channeler. I think Boros Reckoner, too. Probably need to bring in another land if we're raising the curve this much. And then we can also bring in the Sword. You're, uh, as you're seeing, this is a significant shift of the deck. Oh, Thundering Rebuke as well. And then Outpost Siege is an option. And what else do we not want? I think Beaumont Courier is bad. We're raising the curve a lot. Um, Rabbit Battery still seems okay, but not amazing. Hazard, I think, is not worth it. Both because it is... Uh, the, we're raising the curve and we're on the draw, so it's harder to empty our hand. And also, the, the removal gets around it. Indestructible is not that good of a keyword against them. They have a lot of exile-based removal. So, that makes this card quite a bit worse. Um, definitely want the Lava Mantor. Swift Spear is medium. I think we can cut that. Karizev. I think we can cut the Eidolon. Eidolon honestly helps them, I think. Rampaging Frostodon seems really nice. Could be hard to get in with the Rabble Master, but I think it's... The upside is high enough that it's worth it. Um, we could cut just like Karizev or Earthshaker Kenra. Yeah, let's cut the Karizev. A lot of changes here. Actually, Dragon's Raid Channeler looks good now. We brought up our non-creature spell count, and also um, we cut a lot of one-drops, and I do want to have some early plays. Like It's not that I don't want to have a one-drop. I just don't want to have one-drops that are blanked pretty quickly. Um, so what could the last cut be if we're doing it like this? Maybe then we do just cut the Earth Shaker. Now all of our cards are somewhat okay on defense. Like, on the play, I might just go back to the game one configuration. But on the draw, it's really hard to go under them when they have that much life gain. So I think this is a good way to do it here. We can, like... Just accept that we're gonna that their life gain is gonna be pretty good, and this way we're like we just died to, bat, to batter skull with our old plan, but now we can like outgrind it potentially, and then if this doesn't work and we lose this game, we can we'll just go fully streamlined aggro again for game three. Oof. Okay, this is obviously way more lands than we want. Um, it's one of the best hands that we could have that's like this though, because figure of destiny is such a good mana sink. And we have a removal spell. Specific, like, three lands, three spells might be better. Oh, man. If they kill the figure, it's pretty awkward. But we also do have a high curve, and we need to hit land drops. I think I'm going to keep it. It's very, very risky. Like, if we draw two or three lands in a row, we're going to lose. But, okay, nice. Figure of Destiny, or Boris Reckoner was a perfect draw. Um, I think, like, Figure of Destiny is a great card. Having a removal spell is excellent. Um, and we don't have, like, a super... We're not trying to, like, curve out as much in this game as we were in game one. Although, now they just have a really slow draw. So I sort of wish we did have, like, a bunch of one-drops. But this is fine. We'll hit them. Hit them for two. Faithful Absence. Okay, that's fine. Two for one for us. Next turn, we'll, we can play either one of these three drops. I don't think we're going to want a Thundering Rebuke. It's possible, though, I guess. Blade Splicer. Okay, I guess that I think we want to get the Reckoner down. <laughs> Rebel Master wouldn't do much. They would just instantly eat the Goblin. And Rebel Master is a card that we could have, could definitely consider cutting. It's a lot worse. Again, like they just have so many good creatures that are good at blocking it. Alright, we take four. 
I think we just go Thunder and Rebuke or Cathar into cl Crack the Clue. In, in which case, let's just Crack the Clue first. Ouch. Okay, well... Not looking great here. Grant, we kept a 5-lander, which is a lot, but then drawing 3 lands to only 1 spell since then, or I guess 2 spells, is, is pretty rough too. Um, we have 7 lands accounted for, so we only have 9 remaining in the deck. They missed the land drop too, which is terrible. Oh man, yeah, I don't really imagine the way we win this game. They're still at 20. So we could block and trade. I actually think I'm gonna block here and trade with a Banalish Marshal. It doesn't feel great, but we, like, we need to get this Marshal off the board and we don't have a ton of removal. And this means that we can play Rabble Master and get in with a token, which is kind of nice. Oh my gosh, just brutal. My kingdom for season Pyromancer. You can't really complain when you get mana flooded after keeping a five lander, but we still have drawn a very disproportionately high number of lands, even considering the high land count we started with. I was going to say that we should have cut Field of Ruin for another mountain. They do have one Boros Garrison, so that could change it. But I still, if that's their only target, it, like, this is not the matchup for Field of Ruin. There's things that I will concede to here. This Faith Fetter is one of them. They're at 23 life. Having Rebel Master in play is not the worst. We still get to make a 1-1 every turn. I guess we could draw something that's not that good. We'll just hit for two, pass. I think I will burst lightning this golem. It really doesn't feel good, but our life total is getting pretty low. We also don't have Banefire in the deck, so we don't have a great way to use tons of mana other than the figure of destiny that's in our graveyard. All right, I'll concede to that if I don't top deck Glorybringer. And then a figure of destiny of their own, which they level up, sure. All right, Glorybringer, let's see it. Smuggler's Copter. That's kind of an annoying draw. I want to just concede, but that's like just good enough that it gives us that like 0.1 percent swing these guys lose two take one i mean what are, what are we really playing towards here they can like attack us back for a lot of damage copter can maybe help us to find some action basically if they draw nothing for the rest of the game and oh i mean they're down to one card i guess so if we kill the paragon but they can also make Figure Destiny 8 8 very soon. And they can replay. Ben yeah, I'm, I'm just going to concede. They can replay Banalish Marshall from the graveyard. We have no gas. This is not a game that we win. Um, okay, on the play, this is just such a bad. So, Blade Splicer is really, really good against us. Totally shuts down a lot of these aggro creatures. But I think. We still just do it. I, like, we're not going to be able to outgrind them. Uh, I think we just hope that they stumble a little bit. Let's go back to this game plan. I do still think we want to play the um, Thunder and Rebuke. I also still think we want to play Boris Reckoner. I actually, I still don't think we want Hazard actually. Um, oh, Eidolon also seems decent. Wait, did we... Oh, I'd launch you. Okay. Hmm. I think P and Kieran Lars 
Okay, but maybe too slow. Uh, no, it, it's good. It's good against life gain specifically. You can like block and s then sacrifice the thing you're blocking. Let's cut Ravel Master. And one more cut. One more cut. Maybe Reckless Impulse. Just go fast. Yeah, let's do it. I think this is... Oh, wait. Beaumont Courier. We should have played Beaumont Courier as well. Okay. This sounds a good one. It's not uh, It's not incredible. Not having a one drop hurts, but double Chandra is pretty solid. We have a removal spell, and then Smuggler's Copter is probably our best card. <laughs> so we're going to go turn two Copter, turn three presumably Abbott into Copter, and between that we're very likely to find another land. And then we can get our Chandra's going. And double Chandra is a way that we can actually outgrind them while also putting pressure on their life total. So I definitely like that. They're down to six. Sometimes I don't want my opponents to mulligan, but in this matchup where it's just such a, like, it is a mismatch. Their game, their basic game plan is to be fast and gain life. And our basic game plan is to be fast. So they they have a pretty solid structural advantage. Hopefully no one drop, good. We draw the one drop right on time. I'm still happy to draw the Lava Matcher, though. Uh, we should be able to find a window to cast that later. There's a Field of Ruin. Okay, so let's go. Let's play the Field of Ruin, play Chandra, plus for Lava Mancer, and then Crew the Copter. And then... I actually like all the cards in my hand right now, so... Not sure exactly what to discard. Mm, they killed the copter, so irrelevant. Fair enough. This can destroy Planeswalker, so that shows how powerful they think the copter is. We have a more expensive Planeswalker in play, and they didn't kill that. They probably would have killed Chandra Torch of Defiance over the copter. There's a Marshal. So we have the Royal Eruption. Oh, wait, no. Okay, yeah, this is great. We get to plus this for mana. And then play Chandra. And use that to kill their thing. And then we have more removal spells in hand. And two Planeswalkers on board. So this is a situation where we're going fast and grindy. We're not pressuring their life total that much, I guess. But we're going fast insofar as we're like using our men efficiently and building up a board. Faith's Fetters would be kind of annoying here. <sighs> Faith's Fetters on the Lava Mancer. That is a very strange play that I'm very happy to see. Um... Huh. I think I'm going to start with Abbot of Carol Keep here. See what we hit. I want to get some stuff onto the board. Okay, land is fine. So we can go land, and then... I guess I'll plus this for a card. See what we hit. Goblin Guide, yeah, that's worth playing. And now I was going to plus this for a card as well, but now we can just plus it for mana to play out our thing. So I guess I'll swing first. The only way that this would matter is if we'd see, like, Wrath of God on top. In which case, I would not jam into it. They have Shatter Spear on top, though, which means we just want to be as fast as possible. So, we're definitely going to get this Legionnaire into play. We have way more permanents in play than they do. Our life totals are even, but I still, you gotta think we're pretty far ahead here. They play a Legionnaire of their own, and they can play Shadow Spear, and they... Not playing Shadow Spear. Intrepid Adversary, not kicked. Okay, so we can kill both of those. Yeah, this seems fine. Boros Reckoner. Okay, how do we want to do this? I think we plus this for a card. Start. See what we hit. 
Eidolon, interesting. Um, yeah, I'll play this. We're paying a lot of life here. I think I'm just going to be fine with that, though. Just go balls to the wall. Just everything on the board. So add mana. Royal Eruption. Paying three life. Or paying two life. And then we go dismember paying six life. And then we attack them for everything. And so now, and yeah, we've dealt a lot of damage to ourselves, but I'm not too worried about that. Revealing a planes. We are out of removal in our hand, but we have Chandra minus, uh, Chandra Torch of Defiance minus three, and Chandra Dress to Kill minus seven, both of which can find us removal if they put the Shadow Spear on something. And they're at six, so I think we got it. Nice. Chandra Tribal, sweet. So that's a, pretty much as bad of a matchup as we can have, and we still manage to take it down. That bodes very well. There's no way we lose to some derpy Jeskai control deck if we can beat that. Alright, on the draw here against Wet Boy 420 funny name. I wish we were on the play, but I will definitely keep this hand. This is phenomenal. Sacred Foundry, okay. I think we're just going max damage. Goblin Guido. Sun Titan on top, okay. We can kill that. I think we're just going to go as efficient as possible. Swift Spear into Dismember. Hit for four. Stoneforge Mystic, why do we keep on playing against this card? They play Blade Splicer, that's fine. We can kill the Golem. I would like to draw land, but I think I'm playing Royal Eruption either way. Because <laughs> I wanted to keep attacking. Felidar Gu No! Oh my gosh. Felidar Guardian is so good here. Oh, they don't have the land. Thank God. But now do they have Batter Skull off the Stone Forge? They do. Jeez, why does everyone have Batter Skull? Land. Have it. Damn. Um. Hmm. So if we don't kill the Stone Forge Mystic, they put Batter Skull into play. And then I don't think we can win from there. If we do kill the Stone Forge Mystic, they can't play the Batter Skull, but they have Felidar Guardian to blink the Blade Splicer. Basically, the question is, can we um, can we win without putting this Abbot into play? So option one is play Abbot and really, really hope to hit land. We have 12 lands out of 29, so it's not quite 50%. There's also a number of one mana. Like, we could also hit Burst Lightning. Um, so that's one option. If that doesn't work, we're in really bad shape. I think we just lose. Like, the game's over. They put Batter Skull into play, and I don't think we can beat that. Um... The other option is just play it safe, incinerate the Stone Forge, and attack for four. But the problem is then if they get to, if they draw land and play Felidar Guardian and flicker the Blade Splicer, it's going to be really hard for us to attack on the ground anymore. So there's like a few different contingencies. The best case scenario is we have a land on top. They don't have a land on top. We play Abbot, hit the land, play incinerate on their Stone Forge, attack for four. They don't play Felidar Guardian. We have three creatures in play. I think that's a game we win. So I'm not going to worry about that contingency. If they don't have a land on top, either way, we're in a really good position. It's also not impossible we could win, even if they do put Batter Skull into play. But it's really not looking good. We don't have a way to kill it efficiently. We don't have Rampaging for Ossadon. Hmm. Basically, if we just incinerate Stone Forge and hit for four, is that is that enough pressure to win? We know that their hand is 
Actually, we know their exact hand. It's these four cards. It's a pretty awkward hand if they don't... Oh, no, no. They don't have Stoneforge Mystic. Um, I really, really want to keep developing. It, it's just so slow to just incinerate. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for the Abbot. It's very, very close. Wouldn't fault someone for not doing this, but it's the upside is really, really high. We get maximally punished. So now they get to put... and Oh, they have Boros Garrison in, on top. Okay. Ah. <sighs> I mean, yeah, we're going to lose now. They get to put Batterskull into play. That's just a nightmare to play against back-to-back -back white Stoneforge Batterskull decks. Um, I don't think there's any path to victory realistically here. Um... Still no land. What what do we do? Like What land did they bounce their hand? It is it's just a plane, so they can even equip the batter skull. I might just cons I mean, if they play optimally, it, it's actually zero percent. I think if they drew, not like all, like, I don't know. If they, if they drew nothing for the rest of the game, and we drew perfectly. We would lose to their board if they play optimally. Batter skull is just that devastating for us. Batter, like batter skull with the ability to equip it and also play Felidar guardian to continue getting dudes. If we, I guess, I'm just going to, like, if they are just horrible, we could maybe get some cheesy win by getting Chandra down. I'll just hit them for one past turn. Just brutal, though. We had such a good hand. If we were on the play, I think we maybe could have won this. Um, but, yeah, like, really just brutal to play against back-to-back -back batter skull decks. All right, I'm going to jump here. I want to double block, but, like, and, and get rid of the germ, but then they can just, like, either equip it something else or just flicker the batter skull with Felidar Guardian. Just brutal. We haven't seen what the red is for. Felidar Guardian probably means they have Kiki Jiki. Sort of hearth and home. Okay, that's pretty bad against us, but it's good to know about that they have it. Okay, I mean, I, I'll concede. I, I was going to concede already. I just wanted to get a bit more information. I'm going to try my best not to complain too much, but it's going to be very hard because this is quite unfortunate. Um, I think we're going to do the same thing of just, like, being fast this game, like, not not changing much. I'll bring in Thunder and Rebuke over the Reckless Impulse, which just was our death knell that game. P and Kieran Alara also looked pretty good over Hazaret. Do we want Rabble Master or Sword of Hearth and Home or Boros Reckoner? I think one sword looks pretty good, honestly. I'll run it like this for game two when we're on the play, and then again we'll do... Hopefully we get to game three, and then we can become a little bit grindier for game three. This sounds not great, but it has the sword, which could win the game on its own. So I'll, I will keep it. They're down to five. There you go, land, go. Obviously, we're going to be dealing ourselves a lot of damage with this hand, but that's fine. Our game plan is to be, is to just, like, be all out. Um, hmm. Which one is the best to play? Probably Eidolon. 
Both Avid and Earthshaker have end of the battlefield effects that we cannot take advantage of right now. They're playing blue also. Are you kidding me? They're playing Wall of Omens? Just brutal. Okay. Um, we could play Abbott and hope to hit land. I guess I will do that. Like, we, we have to find lands. We're never going to win if we don't. Well, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Pass turn. Nightmare matchup. We draw another brick. Um, we can Thunder and Rebuke the Golem, I guess. It's just so bad, though. Like, we're not going to win by doing nothing. We can't attack if we don't kill this. I'll do this. Swing. We hit for two. It's like they're still at 14. We've dealt ourselves as much damage as we've dealt them. And they still have five cards. They multi five, but then this, like, it doesn't even matter. Their cards are just line up so well against ours. Now there's the Stone Forge, so they can find the Batter Skull. So we have to dismember the Stone Forge, but then we don't get to do anything else with our turn. They don't have a land, at least. Okay, okay. That gives us a chance, actually. Um, do we want to play the Sword first or the Rampaging Ferocidon first? Or do we go, actually, I'm going to go max aggro. Yeah, I'm going to even just ignore the sword. I think we're going to try and win without playing the sword this game. Let's kill the stone forge. We're taking so much damage. Um, and then we're going to play Earthshaker Kenra so their wall can't block and attack them for a lot of damage. They can trade with the Earthshaker if they want to, but then they're taking five. They can't play the Batter Skull for a bit. I mean, it just depends on what they have. If they go like Land, Felidar, Guardian, we're still behind. Extraction Specialist to bring back Stoneforge. Just devastating. Once again, devastating. So our plan is to draw back-to-back -back lands. <sighs> We have to get the Ferocidon down. There's 0% chance we can win if they get lifelink. So they can put Batter Skull into play. But so our plan, if we can put the sword on Rampaging Ferocidon, it's a lethal attacker. And with protection from white and green, they will only be able to block with Batter Skull, or with the Batter Skull token. Why can't we ever draw lands when we want to? Maybe because we're only playing 15 lands. Play this. So they know what's up. They know they have to kill us this turn. Um, but if they can't kill the Frostodon or us, then we can win. They have tons of lifelink on board. But Frostodon stops that. If they, I mean, again, if Frostodon dies for many reasons, both because it's our way to kill them and because it's our way to prevent life gain. Flicker Wisp. Okay, so they go to one, but then they can gain a bunch of life. They gain seven. We have to block... Okay, can we win here? No. Because the problem is they have Flicker Wisp. So we can hit them for five. And then play Chump Blockers. But if we play a Chump Blocker, we lose one life per blocker. And so, then we go to three, and then Thrush killed us. Really frustrating match. I just... 
Can we play against one deck that's not playing Battle Skull? Please see you in the finals. All right, we have our opponent for the finals. Once again, on the draw, hopefully we can have a good hand. And I just want to see, like, a tapped Triome, please. Uh, this is not a keepable hand. This is also not a keepable hand. This is not a good hand, but I'm not going to go to four. Put back these two. All right, tapped Triome. Thank you for heeding my request. We're still probably going to lose this game because we're on a mold five on the draw, but good should be a good matchup for us. We're going to play Eidolon first. Again, both Abbott and Phyrexian Revoker have abilities that will be used better later. They just passed. I don't know if they don't have a lander. That was a misclick. But either way, we're going to play Phoenix of Ash and crash on in there for four. Declaration in Stone. That's a solid answer to this because of Exile, so we can't bring it back, but still, like kind of a two for one. Um, let's play Abbott, looking for land. So far, Abbott has been horrible for us. It's never hit us a relevant spell. Hopefully that can end here. Once again, it's pretty bad. We'll attack for three. Do they have a bolt? No, okay. So swing. Too bad too, because Chandra would have been a really good draw. All right, just another land go. Play land. Um, I think I'm going to Royal Rupture in their face here, actually. For the Prowess Trigger. With the Eidolon in play and their life total pretty low, we want to just push damage as much as possible. Not quite swinging for lethal, but we're swinging to put them to one, which would turn off their fetch land. All right, sweet. So we won on a mold five on the, on the draw. That's pretty sweet. Definitely a matchup where we stay all in aggro. Um, we could consider bringing in Dragon's Rage Channeler. I don't think Boros Reckoner seems amazing. I think I'm going to cut Dismember for a DRC. Dismember could be good, but we haven't seen that many creatures yet. And this helps us to keep our low curve without, um, and, and also just be very threat dense. Yeah, let's admit like this. We might, if we see more of their deck, we can bring in Dismember potentially for game three. If we get there, but I want to have lots of cheap threats and I'm going to curve out. And Dragon Red Chandler helps us to do that. And also, I mean, I mentioned how we have a high creature count, which is true. So that means we won't get as much surveil value. But even with a high creature count, we can still just have Delirium. Like, we're not going to get Delirium on turn two or three. But it, we could easily, you know, like, they kill our Beaumont Courier and our Eidolon and we, like get one, like, w draw one burn spell, and then we have Delirium. So, uh, we don't need to be surveilling six times to be able to turn Delirium on when we have multiple cards that have multiple types. Kind of funny that in our sideboard we have a blue-red card, a blue, a, or a red-blue, red-black, and red-white cards in our sideboard. One of each. And they even curve out. All right, great hand. We'll see how the DRC is. We actually have two non-creature spells in our hand, which include two different card types, so it looks pretty good in this hand. This game, it's our opponent that's on the mulligan. Try them go. Alright, we're gonna get the figure. Actually, 
Maybe this was a misplay. If we need to use a burn spell this turn, it's worse to do it this way. Um, my thought was that we're likely to go DRC plus level up figure. Okay, yeah, against this, I'm happy that we played it the way we did. Chandra, Torch of Defiance into the hand. Okay, let's attack. Level up. And then play DRC. What's your three drop? They need to get a second red source for the Chandra. Oh, no three drop, all right. This is the exact matchup we want to be playing against. Uh, let's go Land Rabble and Bash. Mm, I guess we don't bash for the DRC. I don't think that's a very good trade. <laughs> so they have untapped land. They can play Chandra. Oh, they're not playing Chandra. Jade Light Ranger. It's a fairy. That's definitely going to the graveyard. And then Golos also going to the graveyard, okay. We can kill the Jade Light Ranger. I mean, yeah, this looks really, really good for us. We're going to go Royal Eruption to kill this. Surveil cards after the graveyard. Um, I think I'm also going to burst lightning this just so we can... Attack for as much as possible, and then we might be able to hit Delirium here. Nice. Big attack here. They go from 14 to 3. I'm not going to play the Rabble, the Lava Mancer. There's, like, they basically need a Board Sweeper here. And if they have a Board Sweeper, then I want to have a follow-up play. All right, so we just steamrolled five color, which again, that was our best matchup. And this is like, this is the thing. So many games in, in Modern Cube become these like mid-rangey battles where it's like I'm playing three color control and you're playing three color mid-range and like you, Elspeth Killinger's Death, my threat, and then I, Dragon Lord Silumgar, your threat, and then, you know, we both have Heroes Downfall and like is these really grindy games and then the thing that trumps that is five color mid-range because then you get the most grindy cards like Golos, Niv Mizzet go over the top of anything else that you can be doing pretty much so that is a really good deck in the format I've drafted that deck a lot I like it a lot but then when you spend so much time worrying about out grinding the grindy decks you can just like slip in and just go way faster than them and just beat down while they're playing tapped lands early on and you just like have a great matchup, especially a really powerful and fast mono red deck like this. But then the problem is you lose to Batter Skull. So we couldn't quite get the trophy. Played against back to back, essentially mono white decks, um, which is by far your worst matchup. Some mono white decks are fine, but specifically if they have Stoneforge Batter Skull, um, that's just really, really bad. And then like Blade Splicer is a great blocker against you. They just have lots of lifelink and also lots of creatures that put lots of power and toughness onto the board. So. Those things are going to be really, really good against you if you're a mono red deck, and there's not really anything you can do. Um, some match, like some matchups, you can fix with just like adding a bit of a removal or adding a few more flyers or whatever. Maybe some planeswalkers to grind against control, but there's pretty much no good way to build mono red to beat mono white with life gain. Uh, that's just going to be a bad matchup. There's no way around it. You just hope to dodge it or hope to only play it once. And we did manage to eke out a win in the first round against all odds. And then even in round two, we had a chance in game two. Like, the flicker was... I, actually, we had lethal if they didn't have a way to take out our... Uh, to take out our Frostodon. But they did take out the Frostodon, and then they gained seven life. And just like that, our window was gone. Hit see it, no trophy, but still a pretty fun league. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.